My name is Carla, 46 years old. I'd love to say my hobby is traveling abroad, but really, I'm just a mom who gets a kick out of exploring Google Maps and feeling like I'm traveling. What? Sounds bleak and kind of poor. I get it, I think so too. But, give it a try and you might find it surprisingly addictive. Well, well, step right up, have a look. Today, I'd like you to hear about a friend of mine who's even stingier than my virtual travels abroad. Let's turn back the clock 12 years. Both my husband and I were 34. We were in the prime of our working life, and our daughter, Viola, had just started first grade. Many of the kids in the elementary school came from the same kindergarten, so both the children and the moms continued their relationships with almost the same group of people as before. My daughter is shy, and I honestly find making new acquaintances a bit of a hassle, so having many familiar faces around was something I considered to be a very fortunate environment. But our relationship with the Walker family was a bit different. Michelle Walker, who was in the same class as my daughter, had just moved to our area this spring. Michelle was considered by my daughter to be even more reserved than herself. That was her assessment. Shyness seemed to vanish as she actively reached out and became friends with Michelle, or so I was told. Actually, my interest in her family was minimal. I only heard about Michelle from my daughter when she returned from school, saying things like, Michelle just moved here, or she doesn't talk much, so I started the conversation. The Michelle I heard about from my daughter was painted in my mind as somewhat absent-minded. Oops, please forgive the bit of parental pride mixed into the backstory explanation. Wondering if she's concerned about the quiet Michelle. My daughter is such an angel, I thought. As April was coming to an end, the dynamics among the moms started to change. After PDA meetings, a group of moms, usually led by a few who took charge, would gather at a family restaurant for what they called a reflection meeting. Honestly, it was a bit of a hassle, but it's part of a mom's job to ensure her child's social life goes smoothly. So, on PDA days, I always brace myself with the mindset, today, I'm going to be fully wrapped up in the powers that be. And on this particular day, we all met up at the family restaurant as usual. What? Everyone's ordering from the all-you-can-rank menu? The one who exclaimed so dramatically was a mom friend I was seeing for the first time. Yeah, we like to chat and take our time. Explained the leader mom with a gentle smile. The others nodded, as if agreeing it was their duty to conform. Oh my, the all-you-can-rank menu is $2.60, right? You could buy a gallon of tea at the supermarket for that price. Does anyone want to share a cup? This new mom blurted out something outrageous, ignoring the mood of the group. What? Her absurd opinion left the usually superior feeling leader mom friend utterly astonished. I mean, if one of us orders from the all you can rank menu, I could just use their cup. That way, two of us can rank for the price of one. It's such a great deal. Wouldn't you all want to do it too? That was her rationale. That approach would only benefit her personally, and if everyone did it, it wouldn't be surprising if the police were called. Amidst the silence, the leader mom tried to lighten the mood with, Oh, that's funny, Ms. Walker. What a joke. Oh, a joke, right? Everyone sighed in relief. But the new mom, looking unsatisfied, said, What? I'm serious. The all-you-can-drink menu is such a waste. I shouldn't have come. Her name, Walker. Was she Michelle's mom? It was only after being formally introduced that I realized she was indeed Michelle's mother, Linda Walker. She lived in the same apartment complex, raising her daughter as a single mom. 
The leading mom had taken her under her wing, saying, it must be tough, let me help you out, and invited her into our group. But even if the parents got along, the leader mom friend's child was a boy who charmingly declared, playing with girls is embarrassing. So, Michelle ended up becoming best friends with my daughter, Viola. What really caught my attention was not so much Linda's refusal of the all-you-can-drink menu, but how she'd fill her bag with sugar and creamer packets without ordering coffee. The leader mom, not very close to her, could only gently suggest, maybe you should refrain a bit, it's bothering the restaurant. But when the all-you-can-drink menu incident and her overall behavior, it was clear she was doing whatever she wanted much to everyone's dismay. Is this the parent of my daughter's friend? But it's true that the apple doesn't always fall close to the tree. Facing her unrestrained and overly indiscreet behavior, I couldn't help but worry about what kind of child her unseen daughter might be. Two days later, my daughter came home and suddenly said she wanted to go play at Michelle's house. Considering it was right after the all-you-can-drink menu incident, I couldn't help but react with an overly surprised, what? It turns out Michelle had invited her over. And my daughter had eagerly accepted. I'm not saying she should be overly cautious with every step, but considering who, well, hmm, the child might be nice. My feelings were mixed, but if she's made a promise, breaking it wouldn't be right either. So, I reluctantly let her go. Truth be told, I wanted to accompany her to Michelle's house, but that wasn't an option. Thus, I told my daughter, we need to eat dinner early today, giving her a far too convenient excuse to come back home two hours earlier than usual. My daughter seemed a bit dissatisfied, but as a mother, I'm just worried. I hope she understands. However, after hearing the story from my daughter upon her return, I thought, I'm glad I had her come back early. To put it bluntly, my daughter was scolded quite a bit at their house. Not because my daughter did anything wrong, but because the Walker family seems to have a lot of unique rules. Rule 1. When washing your hands, turn the faucet less than halfway and use only for 15 seconds. Rule 2. Use as little toilet paper as possible, ideally half the perforation, and minimize the water used for flushing. Rule 3. Don't throw away wet wipes immediately. Wash and dry the dirty part for reuse. And there are probably more. Just in the few hours she was there, all these came up. Naturally, my daughter didn't know any of these rules and ended up breaking all of them. She turned the water on fully, used toilet paper as usual, and of course, threw away the wet wipes. Michelle's mom had to rush over to turn off the tap, check the toilet situation, and retrieve the wet wipes from the trash. I felt like my daughter was constantly being watched. The fact that my daughter was questioned about whether she did a number one or a number two after she used toilet paper went really gave me the creeps. It's beyond stinginess. I wondered if it might lead to some kind of breakdown as a person, but in the Walker household, this seemed to be an absolute rule. Unbelievable, it's too much. From what my daughter tells me, Michelle doesn't seem like a bad kid, and I've always thought it's best not to limit children's friendships. But I did tell my daughter to avoid going over there to play. I can't leave my daughter alone in a place where adults will interrogate her about her bathroom habits. I deeply regretted letting my daughter go play there. She even said, I don't want to go to Michelle's house anymore because it's scary to get yelled at. The reason for the bizarre behavior seems to be just stinginess, and as long as the children engage in play that doesn't involve spending money, it probably won't tear their friendship apart. That's what I thought.
at least. About a week later, my daughter came home with Michelle in tow. I hadn't heard anything about a play date, so I asked, did you guys decide to hang out on the spur of the moment? My daughter said, no. From behind her, a troubled Michelle said, mom told me to go eat snacks at Viola's house. I sensed something was off and took the time to calm Michelle down before getting the story. Eat a lot of snacks so you won't need much dinner. Go and fill up at Viola's house. That's what she was apparently told. Given Michelle's tearful words, this is roughly what I understood she was told. But honestly, I couldn't grasp the entire situation. However, seeing Michelle on the verge of tears and not knowing what to do, I couldn't help but believe this was indeed the truth. What terrible parenting, to push a child to the brink of tears like that. Giving her snacks would indeed play right into her mother's hands. But sending Michelle back home or refusing her would only upset both Michelle and Viola. Kids are surprisingly observant of adults' behavior. It was a moment to offer a smile. All right then, let's all cook together today. Come on, both of you, take off your shoes and wash your hands. The moment I said this, both kids' faces lit up with a yeah. My daughter led Michelle to the washroom, and Michelle followed happily. The kids weren't to blame. Even if it meant falling into the trap, they deserved a day of fun. So, I had a great time cooking various dishes with the kids, and gave the leftovers to Michelle to take home. I know I'm playing right into her hands. But when I see those two kids, my little bit of compassion just bubbles up inside me. For a while after that, Michelle didn't show up at our house. I fell right into her trap. I was bracing myself for a continuation of the pushy, demanding behavior I read about on an online forum before, so it was quite anticlimactic. I wondered what all that fuss was about, until an incident occurred. My daughter brought Michelle and her mother back home from school. It turned out her mother had picked up Michelle from elementary school and followed my daughter home. Recalling her past behavior, it goes without saying I thought, this was definitely planned, wasn't it? As expected, my predictions were accurate. Or rather, the reality was even worse. Although I hadn't said come in yet, she barged in with an oddly high energy, exclaiming, what a lovely home, and hurried Michelle along with a come on you too, hurry up. Michelle's clearly confused face said it all. I was at a loss but managed a polite welcome. She sat down at the table before anyone else and laughed obnoxiously, saying, I've always wanted to get closer to Viola's mom. This seems like it's going to be a trouble. Wanting to spare the children any discomfort, I suggested they play in another room. I actually came today because I have a favor to ask. What? Despite never having a one-on-one -on -one conversation before, she was unnervingly friendly. I really struggle with this type of person. You know, there's a school sports day coming up, right? I was wondering if you could make our lunchbox too. For free, of course. Excuse me? I was asked for something far more troublesome than I had imagined. Make a lunchbox for free? If you asked a lunchbox shop the same thing, you'd get the cops called on you, not to mention make the news. Lunchbox ingredients can get pretty expensive, right? All the moms went all out with them, even in kindergarten. Now that it's elementary school, I guess just chocolates and snack foods won't cut it, huh? If you think that's not good enough, why not make it yourself? Can't you just help me out here, please? She put her hands together as if praying, then stuck her tongue out jokingly. Oh no, I really can't deal with people who lack common sense. But in front of the kids, 
Struggling to maintain my composure, I politely declined, saying, I'm already swamped with making our own, and managed to dodge her persistent pleas of can't you do something about it, somehow sending her away. Having firmly declined, I assumed she would end up bringing chocolates and snack foods to the sports day. But then, she started showing up at our house every day, asking me to make their sports day lunchbox. I heard she's a single mom, but doesn't she work? I prefer to ignore her, but she always comes by after school with my daughter, making it hard to avoid her. Yelling in front of the kids isn't very adult-like. I could tell the kids to say don't follow us, but words from children aren't likely to have an effect on an adult who's this far off the rails. Considering all possible scenarios, I had to be cautious in dealing with her. I even discussed it with my husband, and we were on the same page. We hardly knew anything about her, literally at a loss for what to do. Her daily visits boiled down to a relentless, please make the lunch box for me. After nearly two weeks of this repetition, the mental exhaustion started to build up, and I decided to just bite the bullet and make the lunch box. Maybe I should just make the lunch box for her. So, on the third day after two weeks, I said, if you insist, if it's okay to have the same menu as my family, I'll see what I can do. Just bring the container, please. She was overjoyed, saying, got it. I have the container, so I'll bring that. Make it really fancy, okay? It's our first elementary school sports day, and she was visibly excited. Look forward to it. I'll put in some effort. Feel free to brag about it to everyone. Really? I'm so happy. My daughter said the food here was delicious. So I was expecting your cooking skills. I won't hold back on bragging then. She was over the moon. Then came the sports day. I handed over the lunchbox early in the morning. She was unusually cheerful even inviting me to watch the sports day together, but I excused myself, saying, I need to take photos of my daughter's performance. If I stayed with her, I might end up here and give me your digital camera, for free, next. She seemed satisfied with receiving the lunchbox and accepted my excuse easily. Now I could focus on my daughter's performance. My husband and I spent the morning chasing our child around with a camera, idolizing her. After the morning events concluded and about 20 minutes into the lunch break, you guys, I heard her screaming from afar as she approached us. Naturally, we hadn't told her where we'd be resting. In fact, to avoid being found by her, we deliberately chose a discreet spot for our family. Ah, she must have really gone out of her way to find us. How tiresome. Is there something you need? We're in the middle of eating. When I responded curtly, she blustered, How dare you? What's with that lunch box? Why did it turn out like that? I gathered people to boast about it, but ended up being embarrassed instead. Oh, didn't it meet your expectations? What are you talking about? There's no way I could brag about it. You crammed messy, dirty food into the lunchbox. Well, that's terrible. Terrible is what I want to say. I was humiliated. The more I stood my ground, the more her anger escalated. Wait, what? Who only made your family's lunchbox look nice? You said it would be the same food. That's the worst. Discrimination. Inhuman. She ranted, having seen the contents of our lunchbox. At that moment, both my daughter and Michelle, who had somehow ended up behind Linda, started crying. Why? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Her outcry left the woman flustered. Didn't you realize... The messy lunchbox you're talking about was made by your daughter Michelle and my child for you. What? 
Yes. Since we had to make the lunch box, I told my daughter and we invited Michelle over the day before the sports day to prepare it together. Naturally, because it was made by children, the appearance wasn't great. The omelet was misshapen and burnt, and the sandwiches were unsightly with fillings spilling out. I did instruct them on the flavors, but there were accidents like slipping and accidentally pouring too much salt and pepper, so there were likely many issues. But it was filled with the innocent love of children. For me, just knowing that fact would allow me to eat endlessly. And yet, to call it messy without realizing it was made by children. There's a lack of love there. You should observe more closely on a daily basis if it's something made by your child. Actually, I never said the lunchboxes would be the same. What? I did say the menu would be the same, but I never promised who would make it or that the taste would be identical. Look, sandwiches, fried chicken, the menu items are exactly the same, aren't they? What? What kind of excuse is that? It's not an excuse, it's the truth. After all, asking someone to make a lunchbox for free and then accusing them of discrimination and inhumanity. I don't owe you any explanations. A parent who doesn't even make a lunchbox for their child is the one who should be called inhuman. Or perhaps you'd prefer good for nothing? As I said this with a sly grin, my husband intervened. Moms are in boogeyman mode right now. So Viola and Michelle, let's eat over here and have fun, successfully diverting the two kids' attention away from her tirade. The crying children suddenly broke into laughter. Boogeyman, that's funny. A boogeyman. I almost laughed along, caught up in the moment. I'll really turn into the boogeyman when I get home. I had given my husband a heads up, saying, you never know what she does if she loses her temper. So, honestly, just having him by my side feels very reassuring. In case of an emergency, I had asked him to take care of the kids. While I was pondering, her face had turned as red as a lobster. With impressive veins popping out and everything. Well... Since when did making a lunchbox for your child become such a noble act? Saving a month's worth of living expenses is more important than a meal for just one day. She tried to divert the conversation, spouting nonsense. Do you know what time I get up to make this lunchbox? When I said that and pointed to our family's lunchbox, she made a puzzled face and said, What? You probably can even imagine. I woke up at 4 a.m. and prep started last night. So what? Making a lunchbox for my daughter isn't about being noble. It's simply parental love. At least, that's what I believe. What are you trying to say? That you're dutifully doing your job? That's great. I don't have a luxury of a husband, you know. Making meals for my daughter is natural. But I don't do it out of obligation. Sometimes I'm tired and we order pizza, but I don't rely on takeout every day because I want to see my daughter happy with my cooking. I'd rather see my daughter smile, even if it means not saving a month's worth of living expenses. She listened in silence. It wouldn't have mattered if it was just chocolates and snack foods. Michelle would probably be happiest knowing you prepared a lunchbox for her, regardless of the contents. She began to tremble. Michelle said she wanted to cook with you two when she was at our house. As I spoke, she collapsed to the ground. It turns out, she had become disliked not only by the leader mom but by other moms too, due to her repeated demands. There's no doubt her stinginess had a significant impact on Michelle not making friends. Since that day, she apologized to the moms she had troubled, appearing to reflect on her behavior. However, that was nothing more than her clever camouflage. Under the guise of apologizing, 
she started visiting the homes of mom friends. And when their guard was down, she began taking things from inside. It started with small items left on tables, then progressed to toilet paper, tissues, and detergents stored in the pantry. And eventually, she even started taking electronic appliances. By then, even the moms who were victims started to realize it was her doing, and hidden cameras were set up in various homes. Eventually, she was caught in the act. Fortunately, thanks to the forgiving nature of the mom friends, it didn't escalate into a criminal case. However, her parents, unable to overlook her actions any longer, decided to take Michelle back to their care, stating, we can just leave her be. As a result, Michelle ended up transferring to a different school, and any connection with our daughter faded away. But I think, perhaps, that was for the best for Michelle. I heard from someone in Michelle's school district that a new kid wearing fancy clothes transferred in. So it seems Michelle has been living a more affluent life since being taken in by her grandparents. On the other hand, there's not much known about her mother's whereabouts since she was separated from her child and left on her own. There were rumors she was down on her luck, hanging out in dive bars looking for men, couldn't kick her shoplifting habit and ended up behind bars, or even became a lady of the night and went abroad. After she disappeared, all sorts of stories floated around for a while, but the truth was hard to pin down. Since then, we've had another child, and now there are four of us living together. The eldest daughter, Viola, is completely smitten with her little sister, Nina, who's still in preschool. Any man who wants to marry Nina will have to step over my dead body. She's already fully prepared to stand in the way of her little sister's love life. Despite appearing foolish, Viola graduated top of her class from a prestigious university and joined the ranks of the elite. Neither my husband nor I could claim credit for her intellect. It must be the result of her hard work. She vaguely remembers my words and actions from that sports day and wants to become a strong lawyer who can properly point out what's right and what's wrong. Was I that cool? Well, I remain pretty ordinary but I want to be a strong support for my daughter's future successes from the shadows. Now, off to rip up something special for my food-loving daughters and husband today.